focus on the success of this person and the organization. This allows them to maintain their dignity and it lets you keep your job. With any feedback, whether it's in your organization or your personal life, be future focused in your comments. Begin and end feedback with the premise that you care about them or the organization. Always ask for permission in the beginning and always thank them for their time at the end. Study patterns show that companies that do better than average are more innovative and outperform their less diverse counterparts by
incident of expected is rarely successful. You may be greeted with a blank stare, a blank look, look, or a nonverbal, or you to tell me that. The key to giving effective feedback begins by knowing that what you say is only as effective as how you say it. If the person doesn't understand what you're trying to communicate, your message is lost, and so perhaps is your connection. In this lesson, I'll share some tips on how you can lay the groundwork for mutually beneficial relationships by establishing open and honest communication. First, understand your audience. Whether it's a group of students, a new team, or your partner, you need to understand where they are coming from and what they need. So ask yourself, what's important to them? What are their preferred ways of communicating? Are they texters or talkers? Do you know their goals or motivation? What's the quality of your relationship right now? If it's your partner, do you know their love language? If not, read the five love languages by Gary Chapman right away. Next, be intentional. As you're determining your intentions, make sure you're being authentic and not just plotting how to influence someone to say yes to your next proposal. You really do need to consider their best interests as well. Ask yourself questions like, where do they want to be? What's the common larger goal that we're all wanting? What actions can I take to help you fall apart? A quick tip here, if you're a manager, keep a folder for every employee and track where they are in their career. Keep notes on the projects they're working on, the goals they've expressed, as well as their accomplishments in areas of improvement. By keeping track of people over time, you'll be able to monitor their progress on their goals, which will help keep your feedback intentional and goal-oriented. Finally, you need to listen. Now that you've established who you're talking to and what you're talking about, make a plan for when, where, and how to communicate. Think of this like writing a script. Try not to go off script. Decide time and place. Perhaps this is a monthly one-on-one, a quarterly -on -one, check-in, or an impromptu coffee date. Determine the appropriate mode for messaging. Will this be better in person versus email, phone call versus text? Be clear on your intentions and expectations. This will provide the structure for the accountability you'll need. So think about your audience and what sort of messages might resonate with them most. Do you need to adjust any of the what, when, where, and hows of your feedback? When you do the work up front, your communication, and in particular your feedback, becomes more deliberate and more effective. Going from monkeys to Mama, ya, nabasara si Atila doon. <laughs> 